Welcome back, viewers. This is Winch here. Glad you could join me. Let's talk about this loadout, MK11 in the Recon class. Uh, it never ceases to amaze me how much I can play this game and still kind of uh, revisit an old weapon and discover, like, why did I never use this gun? Because probably another o gun overshadowed it, and uh, I focus on that gun entirely. For example, the SKS. So right here, guys, I don't know how many times I've said this, don't pursue an enemy. It's just, you're just, you're not going to win. Uh, here I got an elevation advantage. This guy foolishly followed me. But check this out. I'm going to put this in slow motion. MK11. Whoa. Uh, again, other weapons may have overshadowed this gun. But I see some people run this gun. And I don't know if it's just what it is like recently changed about this gun. Nothing that I'm aware of. But here I pull off a genuine triple kill. And, I mean... In predicaments like this with a semi-automatic sniper rifle, uh, you, with only 10 rounds in a clip, how I'm just destroying the team here is pretty impressive with this type of gun. Uh, but it's capable of these kills, and that's why I want to slow that down for you and show you. And I'm going to show you a wide range of clips uh, with this incredible footage with this game. I played about 3 or 4 matches today with this gun, and I was just wrecking with it. And again, I'm not trying to boast about my skill level or anything with that, but... Um, I just want to show you what this weapon is capable of doing. And uh, it, with its semi-automatic fire rate, in comparison to like a SKS or an M417, um, it just doesn't fire quite as quickly. It has a slightly slower fire rate. Um, it only has a 10 round magazine in it. And for some reason, uh, when I run with this gun as opposed to like the M417, and check this, this little range of close kills out. There's one. There's two, three, and we'll wrap it up with one more. Um, for some reason, the hit detection with this weapon seems much better. And I'll play that again for you. Compared to the M417. When I run with the M417, a lot of people love that weapon. I've got you know, quite a few kills with it, but for some reason, it's, it's inconsistent to me. And I can't put my finger on it. I've, I've tried it with and without a grip. Uh, it just, for some reason, it's, it's good and some days it's bad. Um, but with this gun, I've noticed every game, it just seemed rock solid. The platform seemed very rock solid. Hit detection was right on. The fire rate seemed comfortable to me. Um, and it basically forced me to uh, not get into a trigger spamming type thing with the M417. I, I noticed a lot of times with the M417 and the SKS, I'll run around and you see my probably seen some of my clips with it. I'm just spamming that trigger as quick as I can, and I'm not hitting anything, but I'm just throwing out bullets hoping to. With this gun, it kind of forces me to have a more moderate fire rate, uh, because it just has just a slightly fire, lower fire rate than those two weapons. But it seems like the bullets are actually counting for something with this gun. Again, here I see a guy here behind me quickly with the laser sight here, just fire from the hip. One shot kill on the headshot, and I'll show you that here routinely. Um, and a few more clips as well. This gun is just devastating as if you get the enemy in, in the head. Um, and so it, it seems like your bullets are actually counting for something with this gun. And again, you can see there again as I quickly assess there when that guy was giving me fire. Quick turnaround, even under suppression, shooting from the hip with the laser sight really allows you to put enemies down. I mean, even with a grip on, no problem at all. So you can saw the load out my weapon here. I'll show you this uh, headshot scenario. I run a grip with this, and I run uh, a laser sight. Now again, I mentioned one shot kill if you get them in the head, and I'll get four headshots right here in this situation as I'm kind of shooting over this uh, scrap metal here as an enemy is trying to uh, do the same to me. But you're just not going to win in that kind of situation. Again, it's about knowing what weapon your opponent has. Me, I'll recognize that relatively quickly. Um, I know these enemies here really are kind of at a disadvantage, but not really realizing until it's too late because once it hits you in the head, that's it. But I mean, it's a decent little range there. A one shot kill, and it's just like they only know what hit them before it's too late. You know, where's FMJ when you need it here? This is one of the things about Battlefield. I'm a little kind of like, yeah, you should be able to shoot through this real thin metal, but for some reason, I'm taking cover, and uh, I really don't think you should be able to in that case. But um, again, the loadout I mentioned uh, laser sight and a grip. Uh, but, you know, I'm sure I'm going to take some flack about the grip thing. Uh, honestly, I didn't run it too much without a grip, but stat-wise, I just don't like horizontal recoil. I know if, if a weapon, if it doesn't even have that much horizontal recoil, I don't care. 
I want to have absolutely none. And with the grip on with this weapon statistically, I'll just kind of run through it quickly. Uh, it's going to have a 1.0 vertical recoil, a 0.06 left pull, and a 0.20 right pull. Um, aiming down sight accuracy is 0.03 while standing. So it's not too bad with the grip, you know, with those stats. Uh, a lot of times you get the aimed accuracy penalty, but 0 0.03 really standing, I mean, that's almost nothing. Now moving is going to be 3 and 2, depending on if you're running or, or walking, but I'm not, I'm not shooting and moving at the same time, you know what I mean? Most of the time I'm not. Uh, when you're when you're playing with this type of weapon, you're you're playing at a more moderate uh, pace uh, than a lot of times. So look at this. I mean, this. Wow. I mean, I was just saying wow when I was playing with this gun. And I again, I've I've played with many semi-automatic sniper rifles as aggressive recon because I don't do the bolt action. I don't do the high sco scope zoom stuff. I just don't have the uh, dexterity to do it. I'll be I'll be honest about it. It's just not for me. Um, but I was really astonished how I could really just get in the thick of the action, playing somewhat smartly, trying to peek the corners, looking over cover, using a spot feature to try to help uh, give myself a little more visual uh, uh, accuracy and picking up enemies by being just pouring through them and just still having many bullets left to, to spare. And that laser size you can see there is, um, is, is it getting shine in my face. Really, really kind of puts the deer in the headlights type look in your enemy. Uh, I know it does with me when I get I just can't stand that thing shining in my face. I think in some ways it's much more effective than attack light, which you just don't see all that often. Uh, but just rolling, rolling through uh, 10 and 12 kill streaks all day long in these matches. And um, I kind of skipped over those stats again. I'm sorry, go back to that. Um, yeah, I mentioned about the aimed accuracy and the recoil patterns. Again, Comparable to M4-17s in, in terms of recoil, uh, aiming down sight, accuracy, all that. Reload times incredibly fast as you can see, about 1.8 seconds with the bullet chamber, 2.4 without one. Again, that's comparable to the M4-17. Um, the SKS is a little bit longer in those two weapons, so it's definitely an increase over the SKS. But one advantage this weapon has over all those, uh, those other two weapons is its bullet velocity, 550 meters per second. And it gives you effective range out to 2,700 meters, which is much higher than either of the other semi-automatic sni sniper rifles, with the exception of the QBU-88. That's pretty much right on par with that. But the reload time is so abysmal with that gun. I just don't know why you'd want to use that over this weapon. Um, but again, I guess I should mention the, the fire rate. Uh, this weapon fires at 260 rounds per minute. M417 says it's 295, so it's, it's basically nothing. The SKS is a, is a highest of all of them at 333. Uh, but damage is the same um, with this weapon compared to the M417. Right at 50 bullets, or excuse me, 50 damage, and then it drops down to uh, 18 uh, after that. Is it 18? Well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's way wrong. Thinking about uh, assault rifles, it's 37 half damage. Uh, the SKS, of course, is lower than that as well. So yeah, you're looking at basically a two-bullet kill up to a range of, say, oh, it's just under 20 meters. And then after that, it's going to drop off about three to four-bullet kill. Uh, I mean, again, but that all changes once you get a headshot. I mean, that's it. Here I am going up against a long-range sniper. Uh, this guy has an M98. Uh, I bumped it to him online a little while ago, and uh, he recognized me from the channel, and I was uh, Return of Eric because he had knifed me earlier, so uh, we were having a little bit of exchange there, but always, uh, always enjoy bumping you guys on the battlefield. Um, it kind of uh, amazes me when people actually recognize me. I'm like, really? You, you guys watch YouTube, and you really find my channel amongst everybody else, but... Uh, always uh, happy to, to present new material to the community. Again, I'm always about uh, quality over quantity, guys. I hope you find the range of clips I offer helpful to your gameplay. Uh, I try to be a little more tactical than just uh, showing off skill or boasting about anything. I, I, drew, I do occasionally spill that out, and I apologize for that. And it's just the, the nature of the game, the competitive aspect of it. It's just I do this for fun, guys. You know, this isn't a professional job or anything for me. Um, I just do it because I enjoy it. I like to help people out. Um, I like to kind of delve into the uh, the depth that this game has to offer. Uh, it just amazes me even now. I feel like I don't know, I've been doing this for over a year, a year now with this game, and I still can produce content with it. Just when I feel like, you know, lately I've been feeling like, oh yeah, I'm, 
yeah, thinking about Don't Battlefield 3, but I always come back to it. It's just so much fun, this game, you know, when I'm, when I'm playing this compared to, like, Black Ops lately. Oh, my God. You know, <laughs> uh, I just been getting my butt handed to me in that game, guys. I don't know about you, but I, the, the server issues, the connection issues are a frustration for me. Uh, just not been able to dominate in that like I have in previous Call of Duty. It's still fun. I still think it's a great game, but uh, the map design, again, I'm just a little bit frustrated on. But I'm getting off topic now. Again, here I am, Caspian Border now, again, with some Team Deathmatch run through about a 12 kill streak as well here, using cover as always. Uh, this weapon, again, it's just... I like the sound of that. The look of it looks good. Yeah, whatever sight you like. Again, shooting through suppression right there. How did I just shoot through all that suppression? That was... This weapon... Uh, of, of, of all... The, that was always the biggest handicap and the gripe I always had about the SKS. I mean, as that's like my number three weapon in the game, the SKS. But if you had one bullet from across the map fired in your direction, you had any suppression at all, your accuracy goes to absolutely nothing. Not with this weapon. Not true. And I'm not sure what it is about certain weapons in this game, how they seem to be affected by suppression, uh, and some are not. But for some reason, this weapon, not a big deal. Here I am pushing up here around all these teammates or enemies, and again using elevation as I like to. Getting hit by my buddy there, MH. Really, MH, you have 8,000 kills with the Val? Wow, that's pretty impressive. He's got to be up there at least, I would say, number 70 in the world if I had checked out the stats uh, worldwide. Again, the ASVAL, our weapon I'm a big proponent of. Again, they're a, they're a suppression. Shot right through it, no problem. Uh, this map, um, Epicenter, great map for Team Deathmatch here. Look at all these crevices and stuff. This guy was using some good cover there. I mean, wow. I mean, talk about being right below the ground. Shooting up over that, addressing that. Of course, not much you can do when somebody's flanking you here. But that's pretty much how that gun sounds. You know, it's a quick tat, tat, tat. Uh, there it is. You know, tat, tat, tat. Uh, you don't really have to spam it like you normally do. Here I am going against uh, another long-range weapon. Just about three shots, and they're usually right on in the vicinity. And the suppressive fire of this weapon is incredible, too. There's another headshot. Uh, you just get shut down visually uh, with, with the suppressive fire of this weapon. It's just incredible on the receiving end. It's just like the M417 here in that thing at you. Now this guy went over and paid a visit because he just decided when this map, this is a really good match we had going on, but he just decided to, to troll that mortar the entire match. I mean, he would just sit there, just boom, 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 the entire match. So I had to go over there and pay him a little respect. Later on, I actually had to pull out the mortar and address that because it's so annoying. I just don't understand players like that. Here I am. This guy's got a cover advantage. One shot, headshot right through the vehicle, put him down instantly. Now I'm over here looking again at the, the, the flanking position here through the hotel lobby. Real real popular high traffic area on this match, and on this map in particular. Laser sights do give away your position there, so I was able to check that guy out. There's Nemesis Victim number 9. Really, I mean, this weapon's just deadly in the hands of, a, of any player, I'd have to say. The recoil, I think, is manageable on it. Uh, you'll get a lot of headshots, as I've shown you here time and time again. Here's that aftershock. Uh, so come up here around the corner with a laser sight you can get caught off guard and shoot from the hip on the fly and get accurate shots without having to aim down sights and uh, this is pretty cool this explosion come over here in a second I thought this was pretty neat again the destructibility in this game is always impressive this guy's doing good he's got the M320 here look at that bo building blow up there that's pretty neat uh, he's throwing down a grenade when you hit, whenever you get a grenade in your vicinity you know it's good, you're going to take damage go down prone because that will mitigate the amount of explosive damage you take uh, so I kind of help keep myself alive right there in that situation as opposed to standing up you're gonna basically your, your body will be exposed to more of that uh, that flat coming off that uh, grenade obviously uh, in this map in particular flanking routes are imperative to your battlefield awareness any chance you, you get in a situation where you've got multiple enemies kind of facing you uh, delivering fire Particularly if there's a medic in there, that really makes it a headache because they just revive their teammates as soon as you put them down. Um, so you're really just kind of pissing into the wind, if you'll excuse the, the, the expression there. You always want to flank the team, go around them. There again, I'm just demonstrating there the, the one-shot potential there. Save ammo, make it quick. This makes things a lot easier. So that about wraps up this video, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. The MK11, don't forget about this weapon. 
A lot of people think it's overshadowed by the M417, but I'm gonna have to say it can go to bat against that weapon any day of the week. I know it's got half the ammo capacity, but that's not everything in this game. Don't you just love the one, sh <laughs> the one swipe, knife swipes that fail and do not finish off the, the enemy? That's always annoying whenever you're in the front face. But certainly a formal weapon, a 50 damage bullet, a one shot kill to the head. And of course, this is all in core. Obviously, in hardcore, it's always gonna be a one shot kill for the most part. Uh, quick reload time, high bullet velocity, the farthest uh, range of any semi-automatic sniper rifle. It's just, it's just a beast, it really is. I had a lot of fun playing this gun. I'm gonna run it more. And if you want to run the recon class, I mean, you are you are basically an assault, assault type recon is what you are. Uh, this will go toe to toe with assault rifles all day long, just because of that sheer damaged output. Obviously, it doesn't shoot that quickly, but you know when you're doing that much damage. It'll go toe-to-toe -to -toe with any kind of high fire uh, rate weapon. I'm mean, not going to say it's going to win every time, but it's certainly going to hold its own. Um, and if you're shooting first, I'm going to say 9 times out of 10, you're going to put down those uh, those high fire rate AEKs and 16s at close range. This is uh, this is Windshare, guys. Thanks again for watching. Please like and subscribe to the video if it helped you out. And I'll have more content to come. Looking to put some Planet Side 2 footage out here pretty soon, so look for that. And uh, appreciate all your comments and your support. Thanks for watching.